Well, well, well. It's that day, folks. It's episode 100 of the Guides Network here on your Lake Fort Guide. And it's an awesome day. It's a special day. And we're going to celebrate by doing what we love the most, trying to help people catch more and bigger fish. And we're going to try to go more in depth today than we ever have on a topic that should help you over the next couple months. You have three different guys talking to you, giving you tips. We're going to go super in depth give you the most information we possibly can on how to find pre-spawn bass. Well, episode 100, what an awesome, awesome thing. You know, we started this thing a couple years ago, and when I created it and got it going, my whole idea was to give, go more in depth, give more detail. You know, fishing kind of has this culture where you don't tell all your secrets. You always, you might help somebody a little bit, but you don't tell them everything. Well, I set out to break that mold. I set out to break those rules and to tell, tell you guys, tell everybody that wants to watch and listen everything, trying to create the best place to learn about bass fishing. Not because we're the best bass fishermen or we're the most knowledgeable bass fishermen, but because we give up more detail. We're willing to go all the way in depth, tell you every little detail from the beginning to the end. And I feel pretty confident that, that at this point, there's, you know, of course we, we plug the products we use. We also plug the products that we use that we're not sponsored by. So we do plug the ones we're sponsored by, but we plug the ones that we're not sponsored by. So. In my opinion, this is the number one place that you can come and learn about bass fishing and have honest, open, in-depth, detailed information from top to bottom. Speaking of helping people catch more and bigger fish, don't forget, we've got a brand new app out called Fish Life. We'll link it below. It's ready for Android and the Google Play Store. We also have a web app that works on all devices, including iPhones. Uh, we'll link that below as well. This app is the number one way that I can help you catch more and bigger bass, that we can help you catch more and bigger bass. It's not just me, there's a network of anglers. We got more lakes coming very soon, and we're gonna have fishermen from other lakes that are, you know, experts. They're super, you know, great tournament fishermen, guides from other lakes that are gonna be giving some of this info like you get on the guides network up to waypoints, what baits to use, just like we always say, we're gonna go more in depth than anybody else will. Well, that's what's on our app. We're giving you all the information. When you go to that lake that you subscribe to, you know that you can pull up on those spots and you're around fish, you know what baits to use with all confidence. So to start today's episode off, we've got a special guest appearance all the way from like North Mexico or somewhere. You know what, I'm not even gonna introduce it. I'm just gonna, here, watch. Well, good morning, boys. Good morning. Captain Ron down here in Zapater, Texas on El Falcon. Billy Lawson, hey, congratulations on episode number 100. You can't even count that high. Glad the internet did it for you. Hey, buddy, in all seriousness, congratulations. Lots of hard work, lots of effort. 100 videos and just the God's Network, unbelievable. Hey, guys, quick tip from Captain Ron down here. Let's talk swim bait fishing. I'm down here at Falcon, throwing my big old giant smash tech swim baits. I want to show you what I'm doing down here, just a quick tip for you. So, I've been down here throwing swim baits. I got my poacher swim bait and a light hitch, and then I got olive shad, beautiful colors. We're going to go through a couple things real quick. I'm catching a lot of fish on these, so I'm having to go through a lot of them. I don't want to just keep throwing them away. A little Gorilla Glue gel glue right here, it's going to hold it together. We're gonna put a little bit right here, and we're gonna put a little bit right here. And after it's been glued, this is what it's gonna look like. We got this one right back together. All right, one more thing I wanna show you guys. This little thing right here, this owner beast flashy hook comes a little bitty willow, or a little bitty Colorado blade. I switched it, if you look on there, there's a three and a half. This is a number 3.5 blade. Gives me a little bit bigger profile. I'm even going up to a size four down there because these bass are really big. So what knot do I tie on this big swim bait? I don't normally tie a palomar on it. So I'm gonna show you guys my knot. If my beautiful cameraman, and he is beautiful, can zoom in, we're gonna look at this knot. We go in once 
and we go th back through. Bam! You guys see that like I got it right there? Now, here's the easy part. We're gonna hold it right here. We're gonna come up and we're gonna hold it like that. Look at that. Looks complicated, but it's not because we're gonna put our finger through there. Wrap it back around it. One, two, well, excuse me. Dos, trace, cuatro, cinco, seis. And then we're gonna grab these two fingers at the bottom, pull it through that bottom loop where we're holding it. The very top look folks that's making a loop right back through that top loop grab that loop and your tagline right there just like see my tagline see my top loop i'm gonna grab them together with my main line we're gonna cinch it <laughs> wet it and then tighten it there you go. You got three tag ins. So what we're doing here is we got a big bait. I'm not sure how much it weighs, but at least about three ounces. So I've got two loops wrapped through the hook. Gives me a lot more strength. I've got a big old Kistler 710 extra heavy rod, helium three, making long cast on 25 pound Seaguar line. I want to make sure I got a lot of strength in my knot. So that's it. Quick swim bait tip from down here at Falcon Lake. Hey, Billy, congratulations on 100 episodes, buddy, and we'll catch you guys next time. <laughs> My boy, old Captain Ron, man, he's something else, man. He's a great friend of mine. He's a great guy, a great fisherman. Uh, by the way, if you guys want to book trips with myself, Captain Ron, Mike McFarland, you can look us all up at yourlakefortguy.com. We are now all on that website. We're all booking our trips through one number, one email. You can email us there. Let us know what you're wanting out of your trip. And we're going to make sure that we do the best we can to meet every need that you have for your guide trip. And boy, I'm telling you, listen, I've never done this. I've never come out and told you guys that this is the bait that's going to take over. Well, that poacher, what it's doing at Falcon right now, what Captain Ron was talking about, here in about another month, that's what it's going to do here. That little weedless poacher from Smash Tech is going to be the bait to have tied on throughout the early spawn all through the springtime. It's gonna be a phenomenal bait. It's gonna catch a lot of PBs for a lot of folks out here. There's gonna be some giants caught on that weedless poacher. I'm telling you guys, you wanna be on this bait early. Smash Tech Baits is linked in the description as always. Go check them out, order you some weedless poachers. All right, now we're gonna throw it to Mike McFarland. You know, Mike is kind of our scientific guy, scientific mind, and he understands a lot of the stuff that goes on under the water better than most do, that's for sure. Well. He fishes these shell beds a lot in the pre-spawn. We got a lot of shell beds, shallow shell beds out here on Lake Fort. Pre-spawn, which in some parts of the lake can last all the way through April, even into May sometimes. Mike's gonna talk to you about how to use these shell beds properly, how to position, how the fish use them. So let's take a listen to what Mike has to say. All right, folks, so here we're looking at a map that has very detailed contour marks. Your Navionics chip is one that's very good. Your Lake Master with your Hummingbird is also excellent. This one here is a topographical overlay. So what I want to point out that jumps out at you is these little protrusions, okay? These are underwater reefs. There's one here, there's one here. I'm gonna move up a little bit more and show you another one here, okay? But what we're gonna do is we're gonna consider that this is a potential shell bed area, this area, okay? And pot potentially somewhere in amongst that, depending on the wind, this has to be wind driven for it to be active. But if the wind is driving in on this point from this angle that you see my hand here, typically your shells will lie out on the very tips of the point where that current is coming in and or back in these corners on the pockets. The pockets are the most important part for the bigger shells. This is hard up here. And yes, we do catch fish on the top top of it and there is shell on the top top of it but the density spots will be off in these corners that collect the high dense pro, uh, plankton that builds with the longer the wind blows, okay? So I'm gonna go up here just a notch and show you another one because this one's gonna be easier for me to teach you on the setup. So this is a beautiful shell bed. It's got a road rolling right next to it. It's got a little pocket, a shallow five foot pocket, another little protrusion. Anytime that wind comes from the west, the, the direct west, south, it's blowing in on this. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to go ahead and just kind of earmark areas that I would expect to find the densest part of the shell bed, okay? So here I have a cursor about right in that pocket. Potentially that's where on my sonar 
I'm going to find the dents double echoed on the bottom. Once I've done so, folks, now, all right, so say that I've graphed this and I've decided in that pocket is a shell bed and it's the dense shell bed. I'm going to go new waypoint. I make my waypoint. I like to mark them. So I'm going to put this symbol is what I do use, but I'm going to change the color. This jumps out at me red and I would mark up here accordingly shell bed. All right, now this just leaves all question out of what the mark is. I save it and now I have my first mark. So real quick, what I'm going to do so I can teach you about setting up is I'm going to just pretend here that we graphed this and we found what we're looking for. And potentially I've found three dense shell parts. All right. So now let's say that we have found it. We've done the homework. All right. All right. Now those are, in fact, I fished this spot a lot. So that's about where those shells are the most dense and on the very edges of the break is probably not, it's hard. So it's not the one spot I want to fish. All right, the setup. There's two ways I like to set up on this. First thing is it has to be wind blown. Okay, so depending on the angle of the wind, the direction of the wind is my positioning the setup. Most of the time with eight or 10 foot power poles, believe it or not, I will set up here on the outside edge with the power poles, the wind at my back. It allows my clients or who's ever fishing to be doubled up on the front of the boat and they're throwing into that shallow water. We'll talk about baits a little later on in the year. Um, but that's the first setup. So if that was a shell bed, I'm going to try to get that boat out here somewhere away, not in line with them, but away where like here's an eight foot contour. That's a perfect setup spot. So it gives you access to all three shell beds. So now I'm going to make myself a, a mark for that. I love to do an American flag. If you wanted to label it, you could put setup or boat position. Ah, I misspelled it. That's all right. I'll go back and fix that real quick set up. Now you see the American flag. So the next time I wake up in the morning, I'm having breakfast and I realize the south wind's blowing, southwest wind, I can say, hey, that spot down there is probably getting rocked. I just go right to the setup. I power pull down or lock, spot lock the, the, the trolling motor now. It gives me access to all three shell beds all in one. Okay, That's how we do it and that's how you find success. I'll add you one little bit tip. These are pre-staging fish that come to these shell beds in a nomadic form. Nomadic means whenever they want, okay? Whenever things are right and they feel they want to go eat. What's really truly making these fish come here is that the gizzard shad spawn up on top, okay? So we've got the shells of plankton and gizzard shad that'll be on top. If you have the loon, the gizzard shad are there. If you have the loon, the big bass are there. So that's my best tip for you to find the pre-staging spots where these females feed and fatten up all year long. They're all over the place throughout the whole lake. Now remember, these are the shallow ones. And when we get to post-spawn, we'll talk about the deep ones. So Michael McFarlane here giving it to you real on Lake Fork Guide Network. I hope this helps you find some big fish this year. And I thank you so much for all the support. Mike, as always, buddy, you're the man. That brain of his never ceases to amaze me. Mike's been one of our biggest contributors here. He's been on the channel a bunch with me, and he's been, you know, really my best friend out on here on Fork for a long time now. And man, he's just a phenomenal guy, the nicest guy you'll ever meet. A lifetime worth of experience in professional fishing, and we're so glad that he's on board and he helps us out. So, Mike, thank you so much. And uh, man, we just really appreciate your contributions to the channel, bud, and just being my friend. They appreciate it a lot. All right, now it's my turn. You know, Ronnie kind of talked about how the swim bait bite's going down down there at Falcon. Mike kind of told you about the shell bed deal. So I'm gonna talk about my two favorite pre-spawn patterns. We're gonna talk about catching fishes out of grass drains and ditches, and we're gonna talk about how to catch them out of creek bends out deeper water. I'm gonna get behind this graph, show you guys how I use my electronics to locate these key areas for the pre-spawn period. So a big part of the grass ditches and drains, first you gotta find the grass. Well, in the winter time, the grass dies back. So some of the grass that you may were seeing in the summer and fall, it just kind of disappears dies down, gets to a low level. So I'm gonna set my graph up and start looking, show you guys how I use a big old TV screen right there to find my pre-spawn drains and ditches that are gonna hold the most fish. All right guys, so we're back here in a big old grass flat. And if you look right here, it looks like we're just starting to see some grass. And all I do, I get back here to the back of the grass flat and I start zigzagging. And right over there, that's grass starting to show up. But what I'm doing is I'm also looking at my sonar. And the reason I'm also utilizing my sonar is because I wanna see how tall that grass is. Because that grass, like we said, it dies back in the winter. Well, if it's just 
six inches or a foot tall, that grass isn't really going to do you any good. There's a little bit of grass right there showing up. You can kind of see it over here starting to pop out a little bit. Not much going on yet. There's the channel right there. You can see that sloping down. And even though there's not much grass, see how this grass is right here? But then the drain is, is, is bare. You can kind of tell the difference. Grass here, no grass here. Okay, lots. Seeing lots of grass, but it doesn't look real tall yet on my sonar. Starting to get a little more height. You can start to see that grass lifting off the ground a foot, foot and a half. If you look at these green stripes over here, that's what you're seeing. And this is all, there's grass everywhere out here. Oh, here comes a drain right here. And look, the drain even has taller grass in it. So, hey, there's a little clue for you. So it looks like we got a drain feed in right here, and there's even grass in the bottom of the drain right here. So what you'll do, like, in this situation right here, I'm going to go ahead and mark a waypoint. I'm going to stick a waypoint right there. I'm going to stick a waypoint right there. And that'll create a, spot, a line on my map where I have my graph. That'll create a line on my map where I have my drain all lined up. There's another ditch. See, and that's where, okay, so there's there's two ditches back here. Here's another one right here. You can kind of see it. So we're going to mark a waypoint here. We're going to mark a waypoint here. And that's going to create another line where we'll know where that ditch is. Looks so like we may have another little one right here. So we'll mark right there. We're marking all these low spots, all these little drains and ditches in here we want to mark. If you look, you can really see that grass is starting to really thicken up. Oh man, I started turning right as we went over another one. So what I would do, I need there's another drain right here that I just started turning and it distorted my image. So I'll make another pass, go back over that one and mark both sides of that drain the same way as I showed you before. There's grass growing all the way to the surface in here. So may mark a grass waypoint, may just drop a waypoint right here mark and use a grass icon just to let myself know the grass is really thick right in this area boy there's a good drop in that little ditch right there good night if you look you can just see the subtle difference in the grass right there well that's that ditch so we're going to go ahead and mark a waypoint here we're going to mark a waypoint here and now we've got a line and so what will happen, guys, is you'll create all these lines, and then you'll put your map on. You'll have little two-dot segments where you can kind of see the direction that drain's running all over this grass flat. It's a big old grass flat back here. But after you do that, you'll have a map where every low spot, every drain is. And when you're talking about pre-spawn fish, they like those depth changes. They're going to be around them. Now, if you get a real drastic warming trend, they'll pull up on the flat on the higher side. And when you get a cold front or a cooling trend, they'll pull down into the ditch. But what that's going to do, it's going to kind of lay you an exact detailed map of that grass flat. A lot of the drains and ditches are so subtle in the back of these flats that they're not going to show up on your contour lines. So you have to manually go out and map it yourself. That's how I keep my bait in the strike zone for the entire day when I'm fishing shallow grass in the pre-spawn. I catch a lot of big fish super shallow way before 99% of people are even going shallow. And that's how I do it right there. And until that time, until that water gets up in the 70s, those fish are going to relate to those drains and ditches. They're going to be close to them. They may pull out and get up on the flat, but they're never going to be too far from that ditch and that drain. It's a top secret guide tip. Don't tell nobody I told y'all that. Let's go look at some creek channels. Yeah, this is uh, Mark, my creek men's. I got my map up there. Obviously, so I know where I am. I've got my side imaging to see my creek bends. I got my sonar to kind of know what depth it is for when I'm targeting a specific depth of creek bend. Uh, we're going to roll by this one here, and you're going to see it. It's going to be on our right-hand side. I've actually got a waypoint already marking it right here because I've marked this one in the past. But I'll show you guys how I do this. As you see, this creek bend is not on the map. The regular creek channel on the map is way over here. But if you'll watch right here, you'll see what we're looking for coming up right here in just a second. There's the creek channel, and there's the creek turning right there. See that big tree laid down in there and there's more trees sticking up in here? Look at them fish down there. Mm-hmm. There's your big old creek bend right there. All right, so as you guys can see, we got a creek bend that turns right out here. This is the outside bend and you can 
kind of see on the return there how steep that drop is. You can see a stump right here. You can see a lay down right here. There's another stump on top. There's stumps kind of sticking up out in the middle. A uh, stump right here. See the shadow of the stump right here? All this right here, this is all good. So what I'll do is I'll come in here and I'll mark a waypoint wherever I want to start. So in this one, I'd mark a waypoint right there. Mark a waypoint right there on the peak of the bend. I'll mark a waypoint right there. Mark a waypoint right there. And I'll mark a waypoint right here. So I'd have all those waypoints. So that would give me kind of a horseshoe and I would come park my boat right out here in front of that horseshoe and I could hit all of this whole creek bend with a medium distance cast from that one spot. This particular creek bend is one I fished a gazillion times. So I've just got one waypoint on it. Just kind of permanent reminder. I don't even need the waypoint. I know exactly where it is. I've just fished it so much. But what I'll do now is I'll pull up another creek bend that I do have marked with multiple waypoints like I was showing you. So you can kind of see how I set it up. I'll have creek bend waypoints all the way around it. And then I'll have an American flag kind of in the middle of the horseshoe. And that's where I park my boat and make my cast. So let's pull that up for you guys. All right, so as you guys can see right here, creek bend once again, not on the money. The actual creek bend when I used my side imaging like I just showed y'all was out here. And I marked these waypoints all the way around it. And I put a house right there because that was the steepest drop and that was where the thickest trees were. So that seems to be the heaviest, densest cover with the steepest drop. That was kind of the peak of the creek channel bend, you might say. So that's why I put a house right there. I put a flag right here and I can cast to all these spots from one position. I can park my boat in one spot, put it on spotlight, and hit all of those waypoints, hit that entire creek bend. Here's a picture from one of my favorite creek bends out here, trying to get this glare off here. But this is the inside bend and this is the outside bend. Now, if you'll notice, the wall on this outside bend is much, much steeper than the wall on the inside bend. That's why we always focus on those outside bends. Now, if you go find it with the side imaging like I just showed you, and then you come back and you go across it with that sonar, when you find that steep sloping outside bend like that, that's exactly what you want to see. And I hope it helps. I'm just really, really passionate about helping people catch more and bigger fish. You know, fishing in a lot of ways changed me as a person, kind of helped me get back centered. For those that don't know, I used to be in the Marine Corps. And when I first got out of the Marine Corps, I wasn't a very nice person. And I wasn't very calm. <laughs> and fishing has helped me a lot that way. Um, here's the deal. When you got a fish on the end of your line, nobody has a problem when they have a fish on the end of their line. Like, there ain't a problem in the world when you're hooked up. And that pure joy that I feel is what I like sharing with everybody. It's why I started guiding. It's why I started doing this channel. And it's what I kind of feel like my life's purpose is about. So I do sincerely from the bottom of my heart hope that this helps you guys catch more and bigger fish. And I sincerely from the bottom of my heart thank you guys for watching me ramble on about what I love to do. All right, guys. Hey, get over there and check out sixcentsfishing.com. They're linked below. I use their jigs, their rods, their hard baits. Man, they got great people working down there and even better products when you get on that website you go buy something be sure you punch in that code your lake for guide you'll get a 10 percent discount on all orders kind of another way of us trying to say thank you to you guys so with that being said thank you and we'll see you next time right here on your lake for guide